Hello, my friends, and welcome. Uh, it's nice to have you with us here in the sunny afternoon here in West Virginia. Uh, we're coming to you, as we always do, from Berkeley Springs, our small little resort town, uh, just down the road from Washington and Baltimore. And we're here to talk to Jerry Pollack, Dr. Gerald Pollack, who is uh, our upcoming speaker on the 10th of June here in Transition Talks. Hello, Jerry. It's nice to have you with us. Oh, it's a delight, John. I'm happy to be with you, uh, indeed. We're very much looking forward to having you with us. Uh, uh, you won't remember it, but I've heard you speak about three times now. I think the first time was at, if I remember right, an Electric Universe uh, event down in maybe uh, Albuquerque or something quite some time ago. And uh, then I've heard you a time or two uh, up in the Idaho. And uh, and every time uh, I'm really uh, impressed by the kind of re research and the discoveries that you've made. And but uh, let's start off by giving give us a, just a little bit of background about who you are and where you're coming from and what you do up there in the rainy Northwest. It's not always rainy in the Northwest. <laughs> uh, yesterday uh, it was a, a delightful or the day before yesterday, a delightful 80 degrees, and uh, uh, spring finally uh, came. But it does rain a lot. Um, and, you know, you might say the, the rain is a sort of linkage uh, to the kind of work that I do because, because we're interested in water. And I, I never, ever thought I would have any interest in water. But I was studying muscle contraction, the molecular mechanism of contraction, for for quite a few years. And one of the thoughts that occurred to me, uh, prompted by a, a a student, a colleague, how come you never talk about water when you talk about muscle? Mm. And I scratched my head and I said, "Well, what what do you mean? Uh, there, there is a." Um, a mechanism, a molecular mechanism that involves the proteins. And you've got a few proteins that interact with one another to produce force and to produce motion. Why, you know, why would you ever think about water? And I stopped and I scratched my head. And, you know, we're, we're two thirds water and your, your muscle cells are also roughly two thirds water. And if you translate that into um, uh, translate by volume, uh, two thirds water. Uh, if you translate that into the the number of molecules or the fraction of molecules that are water, you know, just line up all all the molecules in the muscle and start counting. It turns out that it's more than ninety nine percent of all the oh, molecules, my. the water molecules, because um, they're really small, and you need you need a lot of them to fill that two thirds volume. So I, I, I came to realize that, you know, it's preposterous to argue uh, about molecular mechanisms of contraction that don't involve water because, you know, it would be arrogant uh, to say that oh, 99%, 99 out of 100 molecules in your body are just there. They don't do anything. They're just there, <laughs> as, you know, as the molecules that bathe the more important molecules of life. Well, that's what got me started. And um, um, to um, to jump a few a, a few steps, um, we, we we found something um, I think uh, really interesting and and with potentially profound implications, not only about muscle about the water and the muscle, but the water in in our body and in fact water beyond our body. Yeah, we learn well. As you know, uh, you and I, uh, we, we bo both learn in school that water has three phases, uh, the solid ice, the liquid, and the vapor. And, and you know, we've known that for more than a century, I guess. Uh, and the idea that there might be another phase of water uh, beyond a mere laboratory curiosity seem preposterous uh you know how how could it be because water has been studied for so long we found indeed that there's a fourth phase and and it exists uh, beyond a laboratory curiosity so this phase is somewhere between a liquid and a solid it, it's a gel-like phase and 
And it's important for several reasons. Uh, the first reason it's important is that it fills our cells. So, you know, it's not liquid water that fills our cells. It's this, what we call fourth phase um, water. Um, and and you, can, you can actually prove it to yourself very easily, especially if you're a masochist. If you're a masochist, you take a razor blade, you know, and, and just cut yourself. Uh, what comes out? Well, <laughs> blood comes out, obviously. But also, you know, if, if the water inside your cells, if it were liquid water, it would come pouring out like a, a breached water pipe. But it doesn't. It stays in there. So it's got to be different from uh, just a, a liquid uh, and and we found that in, indeed that this fourth phase of water is gel-like and the gel sticks to the solids inside the cell. So then the question arises, well, if it really fills your cells, uh, what does it do? And how do, how do your cells work? So um, I, I'm gonna be talking about this and it, it um, it really challenges our understanding of biology because one of the tenets of biology is that is that the molecules inside your cell, the molecules uh, diffuse around, you know, like if an enzyme is supposed to work with a substrate, uh, the, the two of them can, can somehow diffuse around and find one another. But in this kind of water that we're talking about, which is, ordered and it's like it's like soldiers at attention um and if it's like that and molecules can't diffuse around so you know this raises questions about um, very simple fundamentals of uh, biology that we think we know uh, but we really don't know um, we have to we have to think it out all over again this um, is really fundamental stuff jerry i mean this is like the essence of life as we know it or certainly about the bio our human biology uh, it uh, you know my way of thinking it's kind of in the status of kind of nobel prize kind of stuff i mean this is a big deal well i mean thank you for uh, yeah. uh, uh, intimating that it's nobel worthy actually many people have suggested that but but you know, um, um, no, Nobel prizes are not, not necessarily given for radical ideas. This is about as radical as it gets. And uh, the Nobel committees are not known for their radical dispositions, right. if, if indeed you're right about this. But it is really fundamental. And it, it, if it's if it's right, and obviously I think it's right. Uh, we've done so many experiments. We have so much so much evidence and and the ideas are, are actually really really simple um so so just just let me tell you one one more uh, one more point is that this kind of water has energy um and the energy of course can be delivered to the body um the energy is charged so we found that this fourth phase of water in uh, typically has negative charge mm -hmm. and 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 um, and the region beyond it, uh, the region uh, where you have ordinary liquid water, has positive charge. In other words, this is formed by water molecules, and they're neutral. But the water molecules break up into negative and positive, and they're separated. When you have separated negative and positive charge, you've got an you've got a battery uh, essentially, a uh, battery. Mm -hmm. And we found that this battery can really deliver energy. We put two electrodes in, one in the negative, one in the positive, and we can light a light bulb, or I should say an LED. Um, right. You know, you just turn the switch and and you see it shining brightly. So, so, but this is energy that you and I have. Um, mm -hmm. Energy from, we might say from electricity or from charge, right. battery-like energy. And the question uh, now is, um, uh, how much of our energy comes from food, right. uh, w which is converted eventually into the chemical known as ATP, whose uh, it's theorized a higher energy phosphate pond is what delivers our energy. You know, we we run up the stairs in this 
is said to, the energy is said to come from the high energy phosphate bond of ATP. Well, this is another source of energy, electrical energy that feeds our muscles and, and, and all else. And, and the question is, well, how much of our energy really comes from ATP? And how much of our energy comes through this e electrical? Yeah. And, and we already have examples that we've we we've been able to to find where where uh, uh, body processes are actually run by this kind of energy, electrical energy. Uh, and we 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 found, for example, um, uh, out of findings in our laboratory, we just recently found that in the cardiovascular system. Uh, this energy plays a, a ma major role. We found that we found that the blood is driven not only by the heart, but also by the vessels themselves. It's a new finding. It comes directly from what I've been uh, telling you about in in the laboratory. And uh, when I do my presentation, I'll show you the evidence for it. But you know, and obviously, if it if it's correct, and I you know I always put that qualification because. Yeah, it's been said many times that even even the most beautiful of theories can be destroyed by a single ugly fact. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you 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 never know for sure. But I, as I said, I feel pretty confident because because we have so much evidence, and I, I I'll be talking about the fact that your heart and my heart um, it only tells part of the story. Uh, our cardiovascular systems um, run run on um, uh, this kind of electrical energy that is actually fueled by, believe it or not, by light, mm. just like plants. In some ways, we operate in just the same way as plants. And I, I'll be talking about that as well. Well, that's as that's, uh, is, is fundamental as you get in terms of trying to understand how this all works. And so uh, we're going to really look forward to having you with us because it's going to kind of open our minds to a whole new perspective and uh, it's expanded awareness, if you will, which I, I would argue and have uh, for a long time is kind of the essence of this evolutionary push of of humanity to to the next level of, of who we're becoming is all about expanded awareness, not only about how the world works around us, but who we are in the middle of all the thing. And so uh, this is a really fun. Now, I've, I've heard you talk about the fact that uh, the clouds uh, probably are a derivative of this uh, kind of form of water. Is that true? Absolutely true. And um, I'm not sure how much time I'll have to to speak, but yeah, I, I, I have given, given talks on that. And um, there are so many... Um, um, uncertainties about weather. You know, we talk about weather, we talk about climate change, but in order to understand climate change, you really have to know something about weather and something about what gives rise to weather. Um, I'll be alluding to that uh, somewhat, but really, if you, you know, if you, if you immerse yourself deeply in, um, in, in any books or anything on the internet, it's really hard to find um, uh, something that starts from first principles yeah. and leads to an understanding of weather. Um, most most of what you'll find is, you know, computer analysis of historical trends. Right. So, right. Uh, you know, if you've if you've got a lot of clouds uh, just in in the Pacific coming from in the Northwest, it's likely to be cloudy pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know. And and if if the patterns of, of weather are going to repeat, you just look from previous years, look at the patterns around you, and you predict what's going to happen tomorrow. But you don't understand uh, what is it that what is it that turns on the rain, for example. You know, you that animates it all, right? Yeah, you, <laughs> you, 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 there's there's something. Is there is there someone up there who's got a switch? You know, flips the switch, and <laughs> and that allows the rain to fall. And right. why, why does it fall in droplets? Mm. And, and and also, why does it fall? Sometimes, sometimes you get pounding rain, and 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 the rain droplets are coming down. At um, this is this is uh, reported in in a journal about a few years ago. Comes down at speeds that exceed the free fall 
at the expected uh, free fall 66 velocity. feet per second per second oh, yeah. yeah so something is pulling it down uh it's not it's not just dropping um yeah uh you know and 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 if you're sitting at starbucks and 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 you've got hot coffee and there's a dark background you can see the vapor rising it's evaporating right but if you can yeah. see it if you can see it um it's got to be large uh yeah yeah know, the theory uh, uh, understandable theory is it's got to be bigger than the wavelength of light otherwise you won't see it that's why you don't see the air <laughs> the molecules are really small so it means that what's evaporating uh, it can't be single molecules of water as is is conceived. It's got to be, or at least partially, huge yeah. numbers, uh, gazillions of water molecules evaporating together. You see the vapor; otherwise, you wouldn't see it. So th th those are those are issues, questions that. Um, well, I would I would guess this is going to be really fun uh, because I would guess that this has implications for how plants uh, move liquids. Uh, um, you know, through throughout a tree or a, a th throughout a plant, it is it's broad in terms of its implications across you know, all of our reality. It's and that, yeah, and and that's the essence. It seems to me, and what we do here at the Arlington Institute is to try to understand this path going forward into this new world, and that uh, there is a whole fundamental kind of new awareness, a new understanding of not only the physical reality like we're talking about here, but also this larger kind of multidimensionality with intelligences, uh, you know, all kinds of things here that uh, that are opening up to us in these uh, last few years and the coming years for sure, all that are going to give us a new perspective about who we are and how things work in this world. And that's what's uh, it kind of be fun about having you with us on the 10th of June is to be able to explore all of that. And we'll be around all that's a Saturday. And so we'll start at one o'clock and we'll go till at least five or five thirty, as long as people have questions and we can keep a conversation going. And this uh, will be open. Uh, we'll have, of course, have a, a wonderful group there. Uh, this will be live, but it'll also be live streamed. And so Anybody anywhere in the world, as a matter of fact, can can join us in the afternoon and contribute questions and such. And so this will be a, a lot of fun and it'll really be look forward to seeing you because uh, there is, a, you know, when people talk about med beds and all of these new kind of paradigms and ideas in terms of healthcare and, uh, you know, AI in terms of, uh, not AI, but uh, art, yeah, so AI, artificial intelligence in terms of computers and uh, such things all of those are just paradigm busting ideas in those different domains and here's another one that you're talking about and so it really if you're going to make sense of uh, where we're going and how it all works uh, and how we can all kind of adapt to uh, this new emerging world it'll be important to understand and uh, this is a unique opportunity for people to come and learn all about all of this. It'll be a fun afternoon. And then for those of uh, who are uh, here with us in Berkeley Springs, then we'll have dinner together in the evening. And uh, if you want to stay around and we'll have a, a really nice time. And so we're really looking forward to having you with us, Jerry. And, uh, oh, and I'm really looking forward to coming. Um, yeah, it, it, will re it will really be fun. So it's on the 10th of June. You can get information at transitiontalks.org. And we'll look forward to having uh, you, Jerry, and everybody who is uh, watching us here today to come and be with us. So thanks. My pleasure.